Hello YouTube, my name is Kashif and let us discuss about this fork system call which is used in Unix system programming. So before learning what is fork, please try to understand what is meant by a process. Say suppose uh, you are having a program, you have written any program irrespective of this programming language. Maybe the program you have written and maybe you have stored this program on your hard disk by name sum.c .c means it is a C program now once you try to execute this process you compile it no harm the compilation is successful now once you try to execute this process that means you are bringing this uh, C program file from the hard disk this would be present on hard disk once you load it from hard disk to RAM, now this file it is no more called as a program, rather it would be called as a process. I repeat, the sum.c it is a file which is present on the hard disk. Once you load this file which is present on the hard disk onto a RAM, then the file is no more called as or the program is no more called as a program, it is called as process. In other words, program if you try to execute a program then the program is called as process it is no longer termed as uh, a program now say suppose you have loaded this program onto a RAM now this program is process maybe I called this process as process 1 now Unix operating system would give a unique identifier to this process 1 that identifier it is called as PID that is process identifier you can ask why it is required say suppose if this process 1 needs to be killed by unix or some operation needs to be done on this process 1 now unix needs to give some identifier so that the process 1 can be recognized to recognize this uh, you know uh, the process 1 one ident identifier is given this identifier can be something like this a number which is 365 it can be any number something like this the unix with the unique number which is given to the process one can recognize the uh, uh, can recognize which process the unix wants to deal with that is with on which process the operation needs to be performed say suppose this is my process one on this area of the ram the process one is loaded say suppose the process one needs to perform some other task so what process one can do is process one can simultaneously perform all the tasks together or the other option is process one can in turn create another process maybe process two the process one is creating process two and and ask the process two to complete the required task technically speaking this process one is called as parent process since process 1 has created process 2, technically speaking, this process is called as child process. If I want to give a classic or real time uh, parent and child process example, it looks something like this. Maybe mm, this is my server machine. Maybe this is my server machine. Server machine means you know it is nothing but a, a com super computer which would be having a high you know high configuration to this server machine many clients would be connected many clients would be create connected these are so many client computers this is one classic example which I am giving maybe on this server machine there is a single process running. Now, if this is my client number one, this is my client number two, this is my client number and there can be thousands of clients connected to this server. Say suppose simultaneously all the thousand clients, that is all the end clients needs to assess the server and after assessing the server, they need to gather some information from the server. So what happens is this gets connected to this, this gets connected to the server. Finally, the nth computer gets connected to the server. 
once all the computers are connected to the server what is the possibility is the uh, pro the process that is a single process which is running on a server can process all these clients that is process one should uh, take the request from client one should process it process should take this this process should take the request from client to process it so this process should take the request from client and process it if there are lacks of uh, client connected to the server then this alone process should take all the requests from the lacks of the client and hence it should process it now the problem with this is the process this the uh, this process that is the main process which is present on the server may go down you cannot ask why it can go down very simple if so many requests are coming to one single process then there would be something called as process overhead which i did not discuss as the name itself suggests process overhead means there would be burden for a single process so what this process can do is in, instead of processing all the clients this process would create a child process and rather than pro the process processing the request the process would create a child and would ask the child to pro take the request from client one and process the request and and fulfill the request of client one similarly the process can create another child process and fulfill the request of client two maybe the process this maybe the process can create nth child after which it can ask this is it can ask this child to fulfill the request of this young child the advantage of this is the process does not have any burden the main process which is running uh, which is running on this server machine does not have more burden what is it doing it is just creating the child process once it is creating the child process asking the child process to uh, fulfill the request of uh, one uh, of this client of this client machine since client to since the child process is asked to serve only one client machine for the child process also is not an over it's not a burden hence the process overhead is avoided in this way now the issue is how to create the the child process very simple in your process you will be having executable instruction in your process you call a system call by name fork you call here fork you call here fork this fork could create the child process don't do anything call this from your parent process this technically this process is called as parent process from your parent process call fork 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 it would create your child process now observe how the fork system call works see whenever say suppose this is your ran this is your ram say suppose this is your parent process in your parent process say suppose you have called fork fork system call once you call fork system call the child process is created child process is created and for this child process the memory is allocated on the ram maybe the memory from this block till here it is allocated for child i repeat whenever the parent calls the fork system call child process is created now the memory is allocated on the ram for the child process once the child process has been created whatever are the instructions which are present in the parent process whatever is the instruction instruction means whatever is the coding lines which is present in the uh, parent process would be everything would be copied onto the child process and i told you some there would be something called as process id once you create a child child would be also having its process id that is i call this here something like this child process id 
there will be something called as child process ID. This child process ID would be returned to the parent process ID. Sorry, the child process ID would be returned to the parent. After which, a value 0, a value 0 would be returned to the child. I repeat what happens. See, whenever whenever you invoke fork system call, a child process is created. See, the child process is created. The memory is allocated for the child process. See, the memory is allocated for the child process onto a RAM. Whatever is the instruction present in the parent process is copied onto the child process. After which, see, parent would be having its own ID, child would be also having its own ID. Technically, those are called as process ID using which the operating system can recognize them. Whatever is the child ID which is given by the Unix would be given to whatever is the process ID of the child given by the Unix is given is given to the parent process and a value 0 is returned to the child process if I write a program everything would be clear if I want to use fourth system call I need to use one standard library by name hash include unistd.h next after which i say ash include stdio.h this is my void main maybe before this i am going to um, create one global variable int maybe globe will be equal to 99 in my void main i am going to make one variable by name Mm, int 1var equal to 0 now I am going to make one variable that is of pid underscore t type a variable name is pid I, I have been telling you that pid 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 means the process id the process id data type is pid underscore t type if you want you can use here int if you use int here also it's not a harm both are same PID underscore T and int both are almost same. There is no, no more difference between uh, the data types int and PID underscore T. Now I say something like this PID equal to fork. That means I am creating a child process. I am going to check if in case. It returns a value which is lesser than zero. See, if fork system call fails, then fork returns a value which is lesser than zero. I will tell why it fails. What are the conditions it fail? Till that, keep or keep listening to this video and keep watching to this video. I'll say something like this: printf fork failed. If fork failed, I don't want to continue it, so I say exit of zero. Now I say something like this. Else, if PID equal to equal to zero, I say globe plus plus. I say var plus plus. Now, else I say something like this. 